Okay. We'll give everyone a moment to come on into the Zoom and we'll be starting very shortly. Good evening, everyone. I see you waving. So we will go ahead and get started. Good evening, good evening, good evening. And on behalf of the Stone Mountain Lithonia alumni chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, we welcome you to tonight's event, the five steps to landing the six figure career of your dreams. I'm Stephanie Singleton, second vice president, and I'll be serving for your host as your host for tonight. We will empower and equip you with the knowledge, skills, and tips that you can employ to attain the career of your dreams with the salary to match. Now we've got a few housekeeping notes. We do encourage you to pose your questions in the chat pane, or if you wanna speak directly to our, our presenter for tonight, you can wait until the end of the session where we will have a and a session. We'll also be a little bit chatty tonight, so periodically check that chat window for additional tips, information, and facts that have been shared. And most importantly, I hope you're listening to this part. A few lucky viewers are in for a very, very special treat. But you all don't wanna hear about that right now. What you wanna hear about are those five steps that will help you land the six figure career of your dreams. So grab your notepad, grab your snacks, grab your dinner and get ready to receive tips that are going to help you elevate and propel your career and salary journey. So with that, I present to you Stone Mountain Lithonia alumni chapter's very own, the amazing Adrian Simpson. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, Stephanie and Tanika uh, and the uh, entire Stone Mountain Lithonia alumni chapter. Certainly, um, thank you to Danette Battle for allowing me to share this information with you. Um, I, I, I was listening like, who was she talking about? Um, that, that is too awesome to be me. <laughs> but I appreciate that. And I appreciate the love um, that I uh, received from my home chapter, right? This is where I was born in 2003. So I was on that inaugural Mecca line and I have grown up here and I'm so happy to be here presenting to you tonight. And so I see a few of you out there with your notepads and pencils um, and pens. And if you have that, great. If you don't, I would suggest that you go uh, take a moment just to get something to write with because I'm gonna be giving you tips and information and certainly um, good stuff to capture and, and connect and make sure that you, um, you get that so that you won't forget anything, okay? So I'm gonna share my screen. Um, like I said, I've got a lot to share with you and I wanna make sure that we get started. I've got a lot of information, all right? So Sora Singleton, if you'll let me know if you can see my screen, I can go ahead and move forward. Yes, ma'am. I see help. I need a job. We are Listen. ready to go. Okay, cool. That's the right deck then. All right. So again, I'm Adrian Simpson. I am a member of Stone Mountain Lithonia Alumni Chapter, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. You got to say the whole thing together, right? Fast or slow, but you got to say it together. And I'm here today to talk to you about the five steps to land your next job quickly or getting to the six figure career of your dreams. Okay, let's move forward. And so today you're probably asking yourself, hey, who is this deck for? Like, who's this information for? And I want to be really clear about who this information um, is for tonight, right? It's for people who have a job. It's for people who need a job. It's for those who've been laid off, people who want a better career, people who just really just want to test the market. Um, some of us, crazily enough, um, interview for sport and to test the market and see how our skill sets are, are, are let landing in the market. If that's you, welcome. If you're one of the uh, uh, other four, welcome to you as well, all right? This is for you. Okay, and so I wanna make sure that um, as, as Stephanie mentioned, there are gonna be some, some treats and surprises for uh, those of you who are on with us tonight. Um, and wanna make sure you stay with me to the end and I want you to be the woman, be the person uh, who decided to go for it, all right? So I listen, in the day of inclusion, I, I made sure I crossed out just that woman. I put person because, you know, we might have uh, an inclusionary audience. And so I want to make sure that everybody feels a part of part of the group and you won't be disappointed, promise you. All right. So if you want, ever wondered, you, know, you look around and you see people that you know or sores even or family and friends and wonder like, how are they getting these jobs? How is, how is this person always employed? Or how are they always getting interviews? You ever thought about that? 
I promise you, before we finish this, this information, you're going to be one of those people who has the information, the tools, and the tips to get the six-figure job yourself. Okay, so you won't have to wonder about it. You will be in that number. And so you're probably thinking, like, where do I start? How do I get started? What do I need to do? Lots of questions, right? And, and why now? Why is this information coming to me now? What am I gonna do with it? Well, I would venture to say that there, this is uh, an opportune time. There's no time better than the present for you to get this information on how to leverage this um, and get these six figure salaries. And so I'll start by <laughs> just giving you a little bit of introduction about who, who I am. And this is one of my favorite slides because listen, everybody's going to straight and narrow, right? And there's one little paper airplane going to the right and that's me. I've always been that, right? If you know me from, from sorority meeting, I, I'm a little bit of that, all right? so. A little bit about me. I'm a certified lean process improvement professional. I'm a certified PMP, project management professional. I have a green belt, a Six Sigma green belt. I have a master's of business administration from Kelly Graduate School of Management. I have a bachelor of science from the School of Business and Industry at Florida A&M University, Gold Rattlers. I'm a senior program manager by trade. I have experience in telecommunications, marketing, internet, all these industries and fields that you see on screen. And I'm not making this stuff up. I've got a few alphabets behind my name. And I'm also a LinkedIn strategy expert. I'm a six-figure executive career coach. I'm the founder of the Secrets to Landing Six-Figure Jobs group on Facebook. I'm a six-figure career earner for uh, 10 plus years or more, over 10 years. I'm the owner of the LinkedIn Pros Agency. I've developed a program to help professionals go from laid off to interviewing in 60 days or less. And I've created a process to generate high value customer leads for LinkedIn uh, on LinkedIn for small businesses. So so I've got a little bit going on. And I also, y'all laughing at my picture. I started my first business when I was eight. And I'm very passionate about helping people um, get more money, right? Just how people earn more, more money, get more salary. And I'm also making my parents proud. And so this is a real picture. This is my um, third grade picture, I think. Um, so I really did start my first business when I was eight. I've been an entrepreneur all my life. So I'll say all that to say you're in really good hands, okay? Now, information is power. And so for tonight, it's time to debunk the myths. The first myth, the major myth, is that no one is hiring now. We're in the middle of a pandemic. No one's hiring. I'm not going to be able to get a job. <laughs> it's false. Don't believe it. Here's what you're probably thinking the job market is. And actually, this is what the job market looks like. There are tons and tons of people looking for work, trying to find work who are out of work, unfortunately, too, due to the pandemic and lots of other things. But this is what the job market kind of looks like. And here's you. Among a sea of folks looking sad, right, trying to figure it out. But here's where we're going to get your information and get yourself together, okay? Just a couple of facts, just the facts, ma'am. Y'all probably too young to know this reference, but this is Sergeant Joe Friday from Dragnet. And so... Realistically, 250 resumes are received for every corporate job opening. And really, that's a low end. That's a low benchmark, right? Out of those 250, four to six candidates are going to be interviewed, which means either a system, a tool, or a person has to go through and review these resumes and find the best person, the best skill set for this role, match it up, right? Align it with this job description, then make sure there's a personality fit, you know, interview with a hiring man, partner with a hiring manager, and then find the right person, the right fit. And only one person will get the job off. That's a lot. That's a lot of process, right? There are 100 million job applications on, on LinkedIn posted every single month. Um, and certainly profiles with headshots get 14 times more profile views. There are 55 job applications submitted every, every second on LinkedIn, which is insane. Needless to say, LinkedIn is the premier place for jobs if you're looking, if you're hiring, if you need some new work, right? And again, more than 95% of recruiters use LinkedIn regularly. They have a tool where they go through and search and sort and they find ideal candidates. Let's talk about implementing this process, right? So let's get to the five steps to land your next job quickly. These are them all laid out. This is part of the program that I've developed. And the first step is think strategically, right? Um, you need to really put a plan in place and think about what you wanna do. The second step is make connections, but stronger, okay? The third is grow your tribe. Um, fourth step is move with urgency. And the fifth step is leverage your tools. Thinking strategically, what does that mean? Well, create a plan of attack. 
you got to set daily and weekly goals for success and you'll fail fast, you'll learn quickly. But, but bottom line is you need to address and attack your strategic job search as just that. You've got a plan to go grocery shopping. You've got a plan, if you're like me, to buy Christmas presents. <laughs> You've got a plan to do everything else. You really need to approach your job search strategically. Create a high level plan, understand what your goals are, what you want to accomplish. Because let me tell you something, there's nothing more frustrating and daunting than um, being out of work. Being, I've been laid off, I think it's four times the last time I counted. I've been laid off four different times. And each time, each time, um, I took a moment to kind of steal myself, right? Because that's a gut punch. There's nothing comfortable or fun about getting laid off if it happens to you. And if it hasn't happened to you, you're, you're awesome. You're in, you're in the, um, a rare number. But if it has like me, I take a step back, I take a moment to collect myself, collect my thoughts, and then I automatically start to lay out a plan. What is it I want to do? Not just I want to get a job, not just I want to start working. I need to be working by, you know, next week because I'm out of money or I have more month than money left, right? But you got to figure out how many jobs you want to apply to. What are the target companies that you want to apply to, right? Maybe there are some goal companies, some dream com ideal companies where you want to work. Make a list of those. Who do you know that works at some companies, right? Strategically, how can you align your plan and your goals and lay it out so that you have a path to follow? So again, you're not at home um, feeling stuck or feeling like you can't move forward or feeling like you're hopeless and, and, and just in despair. You don't want to do that, right? That's when depression sets in. So we want to move forward. So again, fail fast, learn quickly, create your plan. And a goal without a plan is just a wish, right? So if you don't have anything behind it, you're not going to be able to move forward. Here's a high level job search plan that I develop, right? That I use with my clients, I use for myself. And so this is bare bones, but high level, you create your plan, right? Kind of steps I've just outlined. You're going to update your assets. What are assets, Adrian? Well, assets are your resume, your LinkedIn profile, everything that you need that's going to be, you're going to be able to leverage to find your next opportunity. You're going to update those assets because you probably haven't done it in a while. And I'm not going to ask that question, but let's just, let's just keep it to our sales. Okay. You want to make connections. You have some, you know, some people, you're popular, you need to know more. You need to make more connections. You need to make sure that you align with the people that you know. The worst thing I've heard people say is, well, um, I, I didn't want to tell anybody or nobody knew I was out of work or somebody would come to me and say, well, Adrian, I've been, I've been out of work since last year. I didn't want to bother you. Well, I know Georgia Power is bothering you. Make your connections, make them stronger, make them stick. And then on your plan, you want to apply for jobs. You want to apply, and I'll work through some of this a little bit later, but you want to apply for jobs. You want to adjust your plan. You need to tweak your plan, right? You don't just set it and forget it. If you need to make adjustments to your plan, you make adjustments to your plan. You apply for more jobs, and then hopefully you'll start your new job. And so on this plan, you'll put some timelines, right? You'll fit where you need it. But this is kind of a high-level plan of how you can go about and, and really strategically plan for your job search. Step two, make connections stronger past, current, and future, right? Tell people that you know that you're looking for a job. Listen, time out for being shamed and embarrassed and all of that. You need a job. You need to work. Partner with some accountability folks who can help you um, sort of leverage those next next steps. Uh, reach out to your network. Your net So I, I used to hate the word network. Like, oh, people say, oh, you got a network, network. That's like a bad word. It's a cuss word um, for some people. But your network is people that you know. Your network are your friends. Your network are your source. If you're a member of Del Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. And if you're not, your network are your neighbors. They could be your cousin or whomever, your former coworkers, a great source uh, for information. But you've got to reach out to your network and let them know. Sometimes it is who you know, right? The old adage is not who you know. Yes, it is. Sometimes it is. A lot of times. You can be introverted later when you cash your first check. But for now, you want to make your connections, you want to make them stronger, you want to let people know, you want to talk to them, you want to reiterate, you want to ask them questions. What you don't want to do, though, I'm real serious about this, y'all, what you don't want to say is text somebody or call them, email them, say, hey, um, I know you work at uh, Acme Corporation, are y'all hiring? If that's you, if you've ever done that, drop that in the chat, say that's me. But I, I know plenty of people have, and I've done it in the past, right? You don't know, but so so here's what that does. That says to the person, listen, I'm kind of lazy, right? Eh, you know, I haven't really even looked on your company's website. I'm just asking because I know you work there. Or, or let me just, you know, pause. I don't want to malign anybody, right? 
it also says, I really don't know how to do this thing, right? Um, listen, I need a job. You go to work every day. So I'm assuming you have a job, right? And so I'd like to work where you work, or I'd like, you know, to kind of do what you're doing, or I just, I want a new job, okay? But what I want you to do instead though, is take a few moments, right? If you know where that person works or you know some company, I want you to go on their site, on their website first. I want you to find out if there's something that's that fits your skill set, if there's something that you can do, right? Because you know what you, you can do, you know what your job has been, you know what you want to do, you know what you're qualified for, figure out what that is, and then approach your friend, your auntie, your cousin, your soul, and say, hey, I see that you guys are hiring for us a flower picker. I'm an excellent flower picker. I have picked flowers for 12 years. As a matter of fact, at my last job, I was a supervisor of flower picking, but you know what? We had a downturn in the economy or, or COVID, right? I gotta say it's COVID, but like, okay, COVID, gotcha. But I used to pick flowers all the time. I said, you guys have an opening. Would you mind forwarding my resume to the hiring manager? Here's my resume right here. What do you do? You ask them for the opportunity. You do the homework. You provide a segue for you to give them your resume. You've already done the work. So what you're asking them to do really is nothing out of the ordinary. And if it's a great company, they may even get a referral bonus or a fee or some extra you know, financial gain, right? Which will benefit them. Hey, does your company have a referral program? If so, I saw this flower picking role on your company's website. I'm really interested in that. Would you mind forwarding it to the hiring manager? And if you don't know who it is, just let me know if I can, if you have a name of a human resource person. Oddly enough, I always kept um, a old school Rolodex, a list of human resource uh, managers and folks when I worked at companies. People don't do that. I do. I would go by and chit chat and talk to them and, and talk them up. And guess what would happen? Opportunities would open up. They say, Adrian, we got a so-and-so opening up in the XYZ department. Are you interested in that? I think you'd be a good fit for that. You know what? I am interested in that. Thank you so much for reaching out to me. I sure appreciate that. It works both ways, right? So sometimes you have to think ahead. You have to have some forethought, right? To um, leverage these types of relationships before you actually need them. So it is who you know, make your connection stronger. Be sure to leverage your existing network, right? And tell people that you're looking for work. So this is an out of the blue request that was in my LinkedIn inbox. This is real. <laughs> um, and I happen to be working. I'm always working late, but 11.23 on one night, I got this um, email that said, hello, I'm looking for a new job opportunity to serve as an organization as a scrum master or agile coach, right? Please let me know if you have any job openings within your network. And I was like, what I just tell y'all not to do. That's what he just did, right? But listen, I was feeling generous. I was up late at night doing whatever I was doing. And a, a minute later, I responded back, hello. I've seen several Agile Coach Scrum Master openings over the past few months. I would suggest you take a look at dice.com and indeed.com. There's a lot of recruiter activity. So guess what? This guy and I are connected on LinkedIn. First connection. So we're actually connected. I don't even know who it is. Um, and so I do some of that, right? Because sometimes I partner with people. I'll introduce them to each other in my network. Or sometimes he might have worked somewhere where I was interested in working. I partner with them, right? Or maybe he had a role that I was interested in or something. But some kind of way we're connected on LinkedIn, which is OK. I got 1,700 or 1,800 connections, right? A lot of people. Um, and I don't know all of them personally, but it's OK. So my response was, hey, and I had I had been online and had seen some jobs. And so this guy was like, hey, do you know if any in your network? And I'm like, as a matter of fact, I do. Here you go. I told him where to go. Now, his response, thank you. My response, I'm over here working for this guy because I happened to listen, the kind of person that I am, I was online. I was like, hey, let me just, it's nothing for me to copy paste this link, right? It didn't cost me anything. It didn't hurt me at all. It, it, you know, I helped him out. Um, and sometimes you get to do that too, right? You get to help people um, and not ask for anything in return. And so that was awesome for me. It was cool for me to do that. So, because I, I, it made me feel good to help somebody, right? So I copied, I pasted it. That's all I said. You're welcome. Six remote scrum masters, six jobs, right? Now, three weeks later, <laughs> he didn't even ping me to say that he got the job and he didn't have to. That's okay. I saw in my LinkedIn feed that he got a new job. And I said, I see you landed a new position. Congratulations on your new role. He said, thanks, Adrian. But look, who felt good? I felt good. Is that If that's something that you would have done or something that you never thought about that you might do going forward, why don't you drop that in the chat and say, I'll do that. Drop it in the chat and just let me know, I'll do that. OK, I want you to pay it forward, even if it's not something that somebody can do for you, what you can do for someone else. That was free. I didn't do I, it. didn't cost me a thing to do that. But guess what? This guy's got a new job. And guess what else? If something happens to me and I can't work anymore, if I reach out to him, he's more apt to help me, isn't he? 
Mm-hmm. Now, he doesn't have to, but he might. All right. Step three, grow your tribe. Grow, grow, grow your tribe. So we talked about the people that you already know. We talked about the folks that you're going to nurture and tell, right? Now I want you to grow your tribe outward. I want you to reposition yourself on LinkedIn. Oh, Adrian, I don't want to do that. I'm not on LinkedIn. I don't see the benefit of it. I haven't done it. Do it. Do it. Type do it in the chat. Do it. Type do it right now. Do it. Yeah. Reposition yourself on LinkedIn. Re-engage with your existing connections and hopefully you haven't been pit patting around and you have more than 20 or 30. But if you don't, get some more. See who's doing what. See what they're doing. You need to know, right? You need to find out what your network is doing. And if all this is foreign to you because you don't have a network on LinkedIn, get you some network on LinkedIn. Because if you're here tonight at, what time is it? At 7.22 on a Thursday night, trying to get this information, you need to grow your, your uh, network on LinkedIn. You do, you do. Type again, do it. Do what I say. Okay, all right, y'all. I'm, I'm finished fussing on that point. But step three is grow your tribe, reposition yourself on LinkedIn. Again, if you're not there on LinkedIn, you are not serious about getting a job. You are not serious about, uh, about getting your next career step. And you're definitely not serious about getting a six-figure job, all right? LinkedIn is what's happening. It's where you need to be for that. It is the premier um, social media site, premier site really, but social media site for um, business, period. I read a stat the other day that said 40% of millionaires are on LinkedIn. Hmm. Now, I'm not in that 40%, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm going to get there. <laughs> but they're on there. So there's like some crazy stat about the number of companies. I didn't include any of that here. But just know that people are doing business and they're doing it on LinkedIn. And you want a job and I need you to be there. Got it? Got it. All right. Again, in your network, if people um, post what they're doing, if they post new jobs, I see it in my feed all the time. People are getting new jobs. Um, that's why I know, you know, there's a myth. There's people are really nervous and scared about the economy. And, and listen, I don't take that for granted at all, but I'm telling you, you've got to get yourself out there and people are hiring. These companies are hiring. You got to find the right fit. It is there for you. All right. If you believe me, say, I believe, type it in the chat. I believe. All right, cool. So Grow your tribe. This is a real um, note from my LinkedIn inbox and I have um, blacked out the names because I didn't ask them for their permission, but this is the content, right? I call, so some of y'all might know, I call myself the queen of the warm handshake. I am. And so the note says, hello, Soars. I hope it's, I know you can read it, but hope all is well with you. It's two Soars I introduced on LinkedIn. Hope you're well and staying safe. I want to introduce you to each other. You're both, a, uh, they work at the same company and they're both an SMLAC. Listen, all of my examples um, tonight are not about Deltas, right? So if you're not a member of, of the sorority, you're like, hey, it's only for Deltas. It's not only for Deltas. I, the gentleman I referenced earlier is not a Delta, of course, but this just happens to be that. And I want to share it with you. Let's give that disclaimer, all right? So they both work at the same company. They're both in SMLAC. They didn't know each other. We have 700 some people, members in this, um, in this chapter. Everybody doesn't know each other, right? Okay. So Blank is a highly experienced IT leader with expertise and strategy in her pulse on the industry. She's managed some high profile efforts and is a great people leader. She is awesome. And Blank is a super qualified safety leader with a slew of credentials and vast program experience in some very impactful programs at Blank and other companies. I know these are very precarious times we're in, so I think it's important to connect people who have similar foundations, even if they don't know it. I'll bow out so you can have a chance to connect. So guess what that does? I introduced two people um, who don't know each other, who I felt should know each other, right? One of them happens to be a client of mine. The other one happens to be a member of, of our sorority, of our chapter. Um, if you're a member of SMLAC, they both are, um, but they didn't know each other. And it's highly likely that they wouldn't have even crossed paths because they work in two very distinct um, divisions of this company. It's a huge company. It's a Fortune 100 company, big old company, right? Um, and so one of them clearly is... Um, a different level leader than the other one in terms of people and all of that. But guess what? Now they know each other. Queen of the warm handshakes. I introduced them. Um, and so the young lady who I introduced, who um, is the safety leader, who is not the people leader, um, has already reached back and said, you know, pleasure to meet you. You know, I'm paraphrasing. Um, both of them actually have responded, which is awesome and fantastic. It doesn't always happen, but listen, again, what did that cost me? Somebody tell me what that cost me in the chat. Put that what, put, put, put in the chat what it cost me. Not one penny. 
that's right. It didn't cost me a thing. Um, I think maybe it took like 30 seconds to type that out, right? So I wanted them to know each other. Um, it's important for them to know each other. They work at the same company, um, do totally different functions. Um, and there you know, may not even be a need for them to, to um, connect in a professional way, but what if there is? Or what if they just want to get to know each other because they work together and it's awesome to build your tribe, grow your tribe, right? And make connections. See what I did there? Okay. So again, think about doing some things like that. You don't have to, but guess what? When you're in need, that stuff comes back to you. I mean, tenfold, you, you would not even imagine, but I just like doing that stuff. All right. Now, step four, step four, move with urgency. See my face? Move with a sense of urgency. Listen, I use pit pat before. That's my little phrase. Stop pit patting around. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Stop eating all the snacks while you home, right? It's time out for that, okay? Listen, I'm not gonna talk about these COVID over here, these COVID pounds, but look, you got work to do. Move with a sense of urgency. It's time to make looking for a job your job if you are in a position where you need a new role, right? I wanna be real clear. I'm not pushing anybody to leave their current employment. Don't say Adrian said leave your job. Do not do that. But what I am saying though is if, you know, go back to that first slide. If you're looking for a job, if you need a job, if you want a job, if you've been laid off, right? Or if you've been fired, let's just be, let's be honest, right? If you're in a position where you need work, then you need to move with a sense of urgency here. Stuff comes quickly and you've got to be prepared. And right now you may or may not be. And so if you are in the not be category, let's move you forward to the be prepared category. Move forward, okay? All right, be the first to introduce yourself. Listen, let's go back to that time out for being introvert. Be introvert later. Introduce yourself via email, via text, whatever, you know, whatever you need to do. Get somebody else to introduce you. Like you just saw that example, that warm handshake. Get someone else. Hey, do you know so-and-so? Listen, let me, let me go old school on you. Um, I'm telling myself. So when I was um, uh, probably in high school, y'all believe I was ever shy? A little bit. When it, and listen, when it came to people of the opposite, and gentlemen of the opposite sex, right? I used to be kind of shy. And so, you know, you have that one friend who wasn't shy, who would introduce you to the boy that you liked, right? If you need that in a career aspect, you need somebody to introduce you to the job that you like, <laughs> you better get it together. Here, take these notes, right? I want you writing your note notepad, get it together. And I need two people to type it in the chat, get it together, right? Take your notes, be the first to introduce yourself, take the initiative, take a step out, right? You've not done it before, let's do it now. Change some stuff, okay? Apply to jobs now, apply often, rinse and repeat. What do, I, what do you mean, Adrian? I mean, do it, do it quickly. Again, let's go back to fail fast, learn quickly, Apply now, apply often, rinse and repeat. Do it again and again and again until you get the job that you want, all right? Again, real stuff out of my inbox. Um, and I have blacked out the names to protect the innocent. Um, but you see September 2nd, right? Hello, Sora, good morning. Again, all these examples, not Sora, they're just ones I have right now. Okay, just checking in to see how your search is coming. This is a Sora that I've been working with. Um, and again, one of my clients, um, and she had been out of work since, um, oh my gosh, last year? Yeah. And so we happened to be talking um, and it kind of came out like she didn't seek help. She didn't ask for my help. Um, we just happened to be talking and she mentioned it and I was blown. I, I was thrown away. I mean, blown away and just thrown because I didn't know. Um, and that it kind of it bothered me a lot because, you know, anyway, about to get it bothered me a lot. Um, because you don't know what people are going through. You don't know if they're on their, you know, their last amount of severance or if they're they're just living on their last amount of unemployment or if they've had to cash in their 401k. That stuff is happening right today. And so let's get back to the example. Good morning. She said, no hits. I've done 15 to 20 a day. So she's, she's using my program. She's following the program. And she said, I haven't gotten any hits. I've been applying 15 to 20 jobs a day, right? That could be frustrating. I said, listen, but I didn't let up. Where are you applying? How many, where have you uploaded your, uploaded your resume? Where, where are you putting this stuff? And she said, Dice, LinkedIn, ZipRecruiter, all three. I said, put it on Career Builder, Glassdoor, and Indeed, apply there. So we're, we are taking a, a broad approach, right? A, a, a pepper spray, right? I hate to say shotgun, but more is better, right? It's a numbers game, okay? Look at that second, uh, second page. The circle says Monday, October 5th. So a little bit over 30 days, right? Good morning. She said, you busy, you busy. I was 
Uh, I was in the store when she texted, but then I got out and I was in my car. I said, nope, I'm driving. And so I said, call me. She called me. And guess what she said? Y'all guess. What did she get? Y'all put in the chat what she got. She got that J-O-B. You hear me? She got the job. All right. And then <laughs> that's right. And so um, last week, no, this is this week, Tuesday. What's the day? This is two days ago. I text her. I was like, hey, good morning. Cause I hadn't heard from her. You know, y'all get brand new. I was like, just checking in, just checking to see how you're doing. How's the new job going? She said, look, morning, it's cool. Not much to do. She's onboarding, blah, 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 giving her some time. And I'm like, that's all I wanted to hear. I don't care how that job going. I just care that she's working. I just care that she's working. I was, I was, that was my main concern because again, this is somebody who had not been working for the, the bulk of this year was not working. Right. And so you see my little doll signs over there. Okay. Awesome. Now, step five. All right, step five. Leverage your tools. Leverage your tools. You have them. LinkedIn. We talked about LinkedIn, um, and I could talk about it some more. Like, that's my sweet spot. That's where I live. I'm on it every day. But you've got to leverage LinkedIn as a premier tool. If you are looking for work, um, if you are out of work, if you need work, or really, I, so I keep my LinkedIn profile updated anyway, whether I'm working or not working or what have you, I keep the information updated, I should say that. Um, but I use it as a research tool all the time. Guess what? Um, recruiters call me and email me every single day and I'm not kidding. Um, and I used to, so um, I'll talk about my group a little bit. I have a group called The Secrets to Landing Six Figure Jobs and it's on Facebook, it's a private group. Um, and so I give free job search tips I give um, information, I go live a lot, I do um, a lot of touch points with folks. I, I'm trying to get my lives shorter. Um, I don't think I've done a live shorter than 15 minutes, as long as it's like an hour. Um, well, I would just be in there talking about whatever comes to mind. I've, I've done some lives where I just take um, questions. Whatever your questions are about online career stuff or just career stuff, period, right? Nego salary negotiation, all of that good stuff. Um, but in the group is where uh, I share a lot of the tips a, on a more, um, just a more drilled down, more specific way, right? I share um, job information. I share listings that come to me um, because I, listen, I can only do so many jobs. Um, and so I copy paste the information. I, listen, I've even negotiated, um, <laughs> I've negotiated the salary on a job and then turned it over to the group. Listen, I'm trying to add some value. I was talking to a recruiter and he, you know, asked me about this job. And I was like, Hey, uh, that's not enough. And so we went back and forth. Now I'm negotiating based on my skill set. That's what you have to remember too, though. So I have a specific skill set that has taken me some while to kind of hone and craft. So do you, so do you, your resume and your LinkedIn profile need to reflect that. Um, if it doesn't right now, then you need to work on that. Take some time to do that. Um, but be very dedicated and diligent in the work that you do to get that to um, the point where folks will call you. And also, I share, it's a numbers game, right? So my resume is all over the place. I mean, I actually live this. So the reason that I can even teach this program and I've developed it is because I've put this into action. Um, uh, earlier this year, I actually had two six-figure jobs at one time. <sighs> Listen, two six-figure jobs, a business, a husband, um, uh, y'all know Harper, five-year-old child running. Anyway, listen, I want you to focus on one though, right? Focus on getting your one, update your LinkedIn, leverage your tools, use them. LinkedIn is free. Now you can pay for the premium service in terms of like seeing who view, who's viewed your profile, looking at um, data and analytics. And I have that I've had it for many years, but you don't have to have that in order to use LinkedIn. You do not. It is a free service. Can y'all type in free? How much does it cost? F-R-E, type in free. It's free 99, it's free, all right, yeah. So online job boards and then tracking tools. All these are, are tools that you can use in your search that will help you get to your next level, okay? So this is um, a snapshot of my profile. This is really me, right? Look at that, girl, look at that, look at that makeup. Looks great, doesn't it? Doesn't look like today, does it? Nope. <laughs> so I would love for you guys to connect with me. This is my real, um, the link to my uh, LinkedIn profile. I think um, Tanika's probably putting it in the chat, I believe. So I thank her for that. So connect with me, right? I told you to leverage your connections, right? I said to increase them, right? 
make them stronger. So connect with me. Absolutely. And so I want you to see too on my page. Um, if you look down, it says offering career guidance, introductions, LinkedIn profile, a resume, feedback, practice interviews, and career information. That's really for two um, nonprofits here in the Atlanta area. So I signed up. Um, and if folks are, if they are affiliated with those nonprofits, if they come on LinkedIn and they see that, then they can send me notes and I'm happy to answer questions and try to provide support for them. Right. Um, and so I just want to just go off script a little bit if I can. With the um, Phoenix organization, what's the name of the group that we talked about? The lady did like a little video. We donated some things, the sorority donated some things. Okay, I think it was Phoenix, Phoenix Pass. Um, I'm Pass. sorry. Um, Pass, right? Phoenix Pass, yes. Okay, because it's, it's actually on my um, laptop. I have it up because I was looking through their website. Thank you, Stephanie. Sorry, Stephanie. Um, because I'm going to, I want to donate some services to them, right? So I was looking, I was like, do they go for this kind of thing? Let me see. So I looked, I looked on the site, I was like, there it is. Listen, you've got to pay it forward, right? And whatever way that is, you got to find a way to pay some of this forward, okay? And so I'm going to do that. I hope that you do something to pay it forward as well, but let's keep going, all right? So y'all connect with me on LinkedIn. Now, online job boards, I used to rattle them out to people like da 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 Well, I'm on job boards all the time. So if you're not, you might catch them, you might not. Y'all know I talk fast. Uh-oh, somebody probably typing in the chat. She is fast. But these are some really good, heavy hitting job boards, right? All of these are still popular, no matter how old they are. If you haven't looked for work in like, you know, 15, you know, 15 eight years, 10 years, whatever, all these job boards are, are up to date. I want to share with you though. So my favorites, uh, of course, Indie, uh, LinkedIn is the big one. Indeed is on the left. A lot of people use Indeed. They've got a lot of information. Um, they also, some of the uh, jobs provide salary um, ranges or estimates. So you can kind of see where you fall, where the job falls. And if you want to do that, you can uh, apply right there. There's Glassdoor. Glassdoor gives estimates also. Glassdoor also provides um, feedback right? People get feedback about companies, sometimes anonymously, sometimes not, but that anonymous feedback will get you where you need to be. I have been approached by recruiters and gone on Glassdoor and read those reviews. No, thank you. Um, no, thank you. It's a toxic workplace. Are they, you know, trying to mask it or clean it up? I don't want to work there. I don't have time for that. I don't have energy for that. Neither do you. You want to work somewhere. You're going to spend the majority of your time, even if it's virtual, right? You're going to be on the, the Zoom or the camera with these folks the majority of your day. You want to work in a place where you like, and it's pleasant. Look at the reviews. Those are on Glassdoor. Career Builder, headquartered right off Peachtree Street, um, an old school one in, in the uh, job board game. They have some great references. Monster, of course. Dice. What do y'all know about Facebook jobs? Facebook.com backslash jobs. I got um, <laughs> the assignment before last. I got my, so I do some consulting work and I got a really great consulting opportunity on Facebook.com. It was high six figures. Y'all better look on facebook.com backslash jobs. I forgot to add that um, link to Nika. Sorry about that. But make sure you check it out. You put in your criteria like you do on other sites. You sort through, get information. You can also um, filter and get daily or weekly requests, pushes of jobs. I would strongly suggest you do that as well. Once you get your resume updated, you post it on these job sites, you put a, a tickler. You put a reminder for, the, for you to get more jobs in your inbox. Listen. You don't have time to go on these sites every single day and be searching and looking and all that stuff. No, you want the job sites to do the work for you. Let them work for you while you're sleeping, while you're awakening, right? Set your, um, set your tickler, set your criteria, let the jobs come to you, sort and filter. But listen, again, it is a numbers game. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven different sites, and this is not all the sites. I have a list of like 150 different job sites where people can post in different things. But these are the seven that I highly recommend that I use. My site, my um, resume is active on all of these right now. And so a lot of times when, when recruiters will call me, I'll ask them, hey, where did you find my resume? Where did you see my resume? And they'll say, oh, I saw it on Dice. I know that one's working, right? They'll say, oh, I found you on Glassdoor. Oh, I found you on Monster. Here's something I want to tell you now. Ooh, I hadn't planned on sharing this, so I'm going to share it to you just because I want you to know, like, um, I, I, this is, I'm real. This is like a real story. So I had been, I mean, looking for jobs. I, I So I upload my resume, like I said, on all these sites. I was applying. I, I mean, I had my phone out and I had on my phone, like saved in the little file. I'm just applying, 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 right? Just, I mean, one day I did like 20 in a day watching TV, right? Okay, you, you know, don't be lazy, you know, apply, apply. I did all of that. And so I'm like, wow, I'm not hearing anything back. But did I stop? No, I didn't stop. 
I was like, let me reset. Right, let me, let me figure this thing out. Remember I mentioned on the timeline, adjust your plan. I adjusted my plan. I went back and then I got um, an email. I got an email on my LinkedIn account and a recruiter said, well, Adrian, this is the last time I'm, you know, I'm going to reach out to you. I've been trying to, trying to reach out to you. This is the last attempt I'm going to make. Let me know if you're interested in this job. And I was like, hey, wait a minute. What you talking about? I said, I haven't gotten any responses from you at all. And she said, oh, um, I've been trying to, to contact you. And it was a great opportunity. I said, well, I'm sorry, where have you been trying to find me? Where have you been sending it to? Child, let me tell y'all something. <clears throat> my email address, um, and I'll, it, I'll share it. My email address is ansimpson25 at gmail.com. What y'all think was on that resume? ansimpson at gmail.com. Listen, you tell my son I was sick. You tell my son I was sick. And I mean, I probably had applied. I did 20 that day. I probably had applied to like 40 or 50 different jobs. I wasn't playing. That lady said, no, I've been sending him to Ann Simpson at gmail.com. I told my husband, he was like, you need to email Ann Simpson because she gave you your job information. I was like, oh, man. So what did I do? I quickly reset. I didn't tuck my tail and go and cry and be all sad. No, I didn't. But I went quickly and took that resume down. Yes, I did. And I updated it real fast and loaded it back up. Listen, stuff happens. It happens. But you got to quickly, I mean, you got to quickly reset, get yourself together and move forward. You, you can get stuck, but you can't stay stuck. Put in the chat, don't stay stuck. Do not stay stuck, okay? You can, you can be stuck, but don't stay stuck. Got it? All right. Listen. And this is a tracking tool I use, right? If it weren't for this tool, and this is, you know, the tool that I use with my clients, I use it myself, um, putting the information in because I told you it's a numbers game. When I told you I applied to 20 in a day, I wasn't kidding, right? And so it's nothing worse than having a recruiter or somebody call you and say, hey, Adrian, um, listen, I'm calling you about the um, job you applied for with XYZ company. What job was that? You know, and I don't like to say, uh, when did I apply, right? Because I should know, right? How many jobs are you applying to, lady? So what do I do? I go, I say, oh, give me one moment, please. I pull up my tracker. I do a sort. Ah, oh, yes, here it is. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm ready to talk about that job right now. Yes, right? Just give me a moment to get myself together. You got to keep um, keep your eye on it. You got to keep a record of them because you're going to get lost in it. And, and if you are not applying to enough jobs to have a tracker, then you're not applying enough. You're not doing it enough, okay? All right. Now, again, if you're in my group, you may have seen this post already, but for the benefit of those who are not, I will share this. So I said, winning results. I love what I do. It's my purpose and my calling. I got a call from a client yesterday who used my strategy, process, and coaching to position herself for new opportunities. She's been out of work since December of 2019. She interviewed yesterday and got offered the job the same day with a $30,000 increase in salary over what she was previously making. That is real. Another coaching client called today using my program. She's connected with multiple resources at some, at some of her top target companies. We talked about that, right? She landed an interview and has lined up additional meetings with other industry leaders to discuss opportunities at their organizations as well. I've coached her negotiating at least 20K to 30K over her previous salary. She got laid off in June and hasn't interviewed in eight years. Look, not everybody go around interviewing all the time like me, right? But, but... Even if you're in that position, you haven't interviewed in a while, you, you need to get yourself in the right mindset, right? You need to get yourself in the right framework. You need to understand how to prepare for that. Interviews are different. They're very different. Um, and there's a lot of stuff that goes into them now. The types of interviews, the types of questions that they ask, um, the level of answers they're looking for. Um, and really, if you are applying to any type of role that's in the six-figure range, then you got to be prepared to really uh, interview extensively. Sidebar, quick story. I know I've got a lot of stories, but quick stories. I interviewed with a major company here in the Atlanta area. They're not headquartered here, but they have a major presence in this area. They are downtown on Peachtree Street. They have a beautiful building. They're probably not uh, in the office right now, but they're a major um, company. And so uh, I found a role. The recruiter found me, actually. I talked to the recruiter first. I talked to... Um, a gentleman who, uh, if I say this, y'all gonna know who it is, but I talked to a very high ranking executive at this company who happened to be um, a member of a BGLO, right? I'm trying to keep it clean. A BGLO, um, 
and great conversation, right? We had great, you know, I told him my, my background, my experience. He thought I was great for one of two roles, right? Um, went forward and I met with um, three other people in his organization, right? I even got invited to like this mixer, like this, um, you know, diversity and inclusion mixer they had. I went, had a ball, right? Um, now some of y'all do know if y'all was called. Um, I had a total of six encounters with them. Do you know they did not hire me? They did not offer me the job. Look, it happens. And so, well, I was a bit surprised. Um, I wasn't angry. Okay. Um, Y'all lost, right? But I mean, I put my heart into it. Um, I, I interviewed over the phone. I interviewed in person. I even chatted up and interviewed at the diversity and inclusion uh, event, right? Did I think it was a shoe in I didn't think it was a shoe in I thought I had a pretty, I really thought I probably had a 90% plus chance. But guess what? Sometimes it happens like that. And so if I had only banked on that role, if I only counted on that role, I would be somewhere sad, crying my eyes out. But I was not. As a matter of fact, I met a young lady who was a recruiter somewhere else who later went to work for that company. And I pinged her one day just to keep up with her, just to you know catch up because I do that too. Um, and so she said, whatever happened with that job? And I told her, she was like, I cannot believe that happened. She's a recruiter. I said, ma'am, it's okay. It's all good. I found something else, something else found me, right? But you gotta keep yourself moving, okay? You gotta keep going. And so um, I said, don't stay stagnant, keep it moving, have a sense of urgency, right? Get going, okay? Now, I wanna know if you're gonna be my next success. So I shared with the, um, the sorors who are managing this event that before uh, before this event started that I am introducing something new and I'm only introducing it on this call today for the first time and this will be the only group that I share it with. So y'all get ready. So the LinkedIn Pros is introducing a masterclass um, where I will lead a very small cohort of people, no more than 10, through um, a very specific and strategic process to get them to level to six figures. So what's included? Um, for this masterclass, you're gonna get started on the most important tool in your job search arsenal. So I've talked about it a little bit, guys, but I really have um, just a plethora of knowledge um, and strategy around leveraging LinkedIn for your job search. Um, it, is, it is, again, the utmost tool that is used in industry today to, to find and secure jobs for a number of reasons. And so this masterclass is around preparing you for that, right? You get started on that most important tool. It's a guided process on how to successfully position yourself, right? Um, with, with optimization and, and strategically placing you in, in front of the right people to make the hiring decisions for the roles that you want. You'll work at a self-directed pace and you'll come out with an updated profile or a new profile if you don't have one. We're not gonna talk about that. And you'll be able to start applying for jobs immediately. So for my, my, I have coaching clients, right? For those clients, like we don't wait, we are on it. I am pushing them to, to, cause what you want to do is you don't want to spend your money and not get a job, right? I'm pushing them to apply. And we are very strategic in our search and look, because you want to find the best fit. You don't want to find just the next job. You want to find the next best opportunity, right? There's a difference. Okay. Now, listen, if you don't want to do any work, and you don't want another job and you don't want to make six figures, this is not for you, right? This is not me saying, do this, do that, do that. No, it is us partnering together. And again, I mentioned it's a very small cohort of people, right? So I'm lo really looking for people who want to focus and want to go to the next level. Now, if you want to do that, and you want to, you want to leverage this opportunity, then it is for you. So I mentioned, I do coaching. I have um, executive clients, professional clients. I also have small business clients. Uh, and this is different from that. So I decided that, you know, there's a group of people who really aren't ready for that level of, um, of push. I'm saying that real nice. <laughs> um, just level of coaching, right? Because that's, uh, I have a kind of intense program. Um, because I want you to get out of it what you need. And that's me doing the bulk of the work for them, right? Um, but if you are a self-directed person, like, hey, Adrian, I just need, you know, I need the blueprint, right? I need your tips. I need your strategy, right? I'm going to do it myself. Then this is for you, okay? Now, 
for this masterclass. I know y'all see retail value 697. You're like, oh my God. Well, guess what? Um, if you were getting your, your LinkedIn profile, just your LinkedIn profile done, a lot of people charge over a thousand dollars for that. Just the profile alone, not resume, not anything else. That is just developing your profile because guess what? If you're on LinkedIn and you're looking for roles and opportunities, you're looking for something that's going to pay you a lot of money, right? So that's an investment. Now, so what's included in the masterclass is two days of interactive training. And it's only on November 17th and 18th. I literally am only carving out two days. I'm doing this one time to see if it kind of fits with my company. Um, see if I want to do it again, but two days and that's it. It's my strategy. It's my strategy that I've designed. I've shared with you a little bit. I shared with you some of the wins from it, right? And what's occurred because of it. And those are real. Um, and so you get my strategy process in terms of how you develop your, your profile and your viewpoint on LinkedIn. You get to use my highly successful profile formula. So I have a formula that I use that I have created that defines very specifically what you put and where on LinkedIn and how you build your profile and it works. And it is a daily Q&A session. So uh, I mentioned to you kind of where I go live and stuff in the chat, but this is not that. This is interactive. This is um, those 10 folks, you know, asking their questions, coming prepared, right? Really getting their questions answered because when we come out of this thing, right? I, I'm very serious. When we come out of this thing, they've got an optimized premier profile that recruiters are going to start searching and finding and, and offering them roles and responsibilities. Okay. All right. So, Here's another testimonial from my client. And this isn't Janice in our chapter, by the way. This is a different Janice. Um, this is my, my client in Chicago. And she says, I hope your Friday is going well. I wanted to let you know I'm actively connecting with several prospects for a new role. In fact, I just turned down one offer today. It wasn't the best fit for me. I know the profile support you provide was essential in all this new activity. So listen, this lady came to me. She was referred to me by um, someone. And she's actually one of my executive professional clients. And so she had just gotten a promotion like two months ago. Um, and she said, yeah, but I want to position myself differently. I want to be a vice president. And I said, okay. So I did the research for her because that's, that's what I do as a part of the program. I did the research. I outlined everything for her. I created, you know, all the assets for her. We, we, we find that. Um, and then I found some very high paying roles at the vice president level, not at the director level where she was, because she said, I want to go to the next level. So, okay, we positioned her for such. And so Y'all can see, I mean, she's turning down offers. I was like, you turning them down. <laughs> okay, ma'am. But this is what um, you have to do. You got to be prepared for the work and you got to be prepared to move on it, right? You can't be um, complacent or steadfast. And so, yeah, she's one of my favorites because she was ready. Um, she was ready to move forward and, and you got to be that. All right. All right. Now, if all this masterclass did was give you an updated LinkedIn profile, if all it did was increase your, um, your salary by twenty dollars or $30,000, if all it did was change your tax record, would that be enough for you to say yes? So, you know, you want to join? If so, type yes in the chat. Just type yes. Let me know. All right. Now, so I put total retail value 697 but guess what? Today, I'm telling y'all, it's only today, it's only for this, this group of people, it's only 397. So listen, that's on a whole lot of things. That's on the strength of this chapter and my love for this chapter. That's on the strength of um, I really want to support folks who are in need, right? Um, and the my my coaching program is is a whole different investment um but i want to be able to create something where you you can do the work and see the value of it very quickly and help you leverage to move forward with your roles with your jobs okay now i provide 100 percent satisfaction guarantee i do because it's working um and i'm not afraid of um I'm not afraid of saying that because I know that I put a lot of heart and effort. And if you do the same, if we partner on our effort, then you're going to get uh, benefits out of it. You're going to get your satisfaction and we're going to be good to go, right? You want your money back though? You say, Adrian, it's not working for me. I didn't have any kind of transformation. Nobody reached out to me. Like my profile is nuts and nothing happened. I said, okay, I'll give you money back. No problem. All right. But wait, there's one. I love this slide. But wait, there's more. <laughs> so listen, as a sign-on bonus, I will also add my step-by-step -step workbook 
right, which walks you through the process, which is a thing that you can keep, right? We're going to, again, we're going to craft your strategy. It's individual strategy. It's not uh, something that is a, a wide wash for everybody. This is your strategy for your LinkedIn profile that best suits you. So there's a workbook that you'll have to work and you'll have to do the work, right? 30-day strategic roadmap. So the plan I showed you earlier was like a high level thing. No, this is, so we're gonna meet for, for two days, right? Our, our training is two days, but you'll have a 30 day program, a plan that you can map to and make sure that you mark on what you've done, right? That you're getting it done. You're getting your things accomplished. You set your goals that you're making your success metrics, right? That you are doing the work and you're achieving your goals. There's a 30 day strategic road. So there's some work, right? It's not all, you know, bubble gum and candy. There is some work, but listen, it's worth it. It's absolutely worth it. And I'm going to give you introduction to my new leverage your list program. And so that's what um, something I'll share with the folks who are interested, but it's leveraging your list. It's talking, it's working with the connections. Um, so again, you saw my warm handshake, right? A part of the program is that as well. I absolutely will, will do some warm handshakes for folks who are in this cohort. So that's included. I should have put that on there. I did not. All right. Retail value of that is 250. Listen, and an extra bonus. Uh, I'll give you access to masterclass only office hours. So just for the masterclass, will they have these office hours where we'll be able to talk and ask questions. So that's aside from the Q&A from the two days, right? This is a separate set of um, office hours. You say, hey, Adrian, I've got clients right now, right? That go through the program and then on the back end, they decide to change something or they want to you know, interview for a different job now. And so they ask me different questions. I'm absolutely open to that. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. All right. And so now I do have an hourly rate for, for chatting right? For chit chatting. And so I put retail value at 300, but really it's a little bit more, but I put that just for the, um, the masterclass hours. Okay. And so if you're adding up for the folks at home, introductory masterclass, right? 697, the sign on bonus retail value is 250. And then the extra bonus, the retail value of that for the masterclass office hours is 300, right? That total is 1247. We said no, 397. And so really, are you worth the investment? Do you want to make an investment in yourself? Do you want to make an investment in making these six figures? Do you want to make more money? If the answer is yes, um, and I'm sorry, Tanika, I didn't give you this link, but there it is. So if, you, if you're interested, here's the link to uh, sign up for the masterclass, right? That's just to sign up and then I'll send you some information. Um, we'll, you know, get everything going, but I'm only taking 10 people. I, I literally am only taking, I don't have the capacity for more um, I put, I don't know if you even saw like the blurb from my group where I said at the bottom, um, I was only taking like five clients in October. Guess what? Before I could even get to that, it, it was like my, if you look at my calendar, it's booked for October. I'm well into November. So I'm only taking 10 people in this masterclass. That is it. And um, it's open now. So you can sign up now if you're interested. I'm only going to keep it open to Saturday. So Saturday at 11.59 PM, it closes. Um, so if you're interested, and joining this masterclass and getting to this money, right? And getting your profile together and learning the strategies to make sure that you are um, in the six figure club and you stay there, then I invite you to join the masterclass and make the investment. Now, take action now, now, now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is, I mean, listen, y'all get it. You know what I'm saying? That's that. All right. 397. That's it for today. Listen, y'all ready for questions? Oh, I forgot. Hold on. Before you do questions, I promise you a free gift for staying to the end. Thank you so much for those who stayed. I really appreciate you guys for hanging on. I know it's a lot and I was kind of sharing a lot. I want to make sure I got it all in, right? But if you text job tips to 474747, I will do a free LinkedIn profile assessment for you. So you text that um, and then I'll, I'll do a free assessment of your profile. I'll let you know kind of what you need to do, move forward. And that's whether or not you do the masterclass or not, right? You know, that's up to you um, because you might be number 11 and I'm like, oh, I can't do it, but I will still absolutely do a free assessment of your LinkedIn profile. I'm happy to do that for you. All right. Now questions. Whew. Whew. Now <laughs> I feel like you just gave me all of my life to reevaluate and get myself together. So we also have another surprise for you who all, all of you who stayed on the call. We had a very generous donation yeah. of five $20 Amazon gift cards. Yay! But, 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 but in order to get these gift cards, you gotta work for it. How Adrian says, you gotta work, you gotta work, you gotta work. 
So that being said, I am looking at our Facebook Live, which we are still streaming on. I'm looking at the chat in Zoom. The first five people between both of these, I'm watching both, the first five people to list the five steps will get the gift cards in five, four, three, two, one, and go. Yes. Yes. Do it, do it, do it. And after this, we will have a couple of questions. We did have a couple of questions coming on Facebook. Okay. I see y'all scribbling. Come on. Uh, y'all are scribbling. Ooh. I want you to win. Come on. Listen, who can't use a gift card from Amazon? Oof. Let me go against my balance. <laughs> I've gotten so bad. I just ordered. I'm like, oh, okay, I just ordered. I paid for Prime. So uh, coming to my, one at a time. It shouldn't do that. It shouldn't do that. <laughs> so while we're waiting for those questions or for the responses to come in, Sarah Kyle, we did have a question on Facebook. Would you mind reading that question so that Sarah Simpson can provide a response? D and Dukes, I see you. You are one of our winners. Yeah. Yeah. For my friend. Yay, Denisha. <laughs> right, our question is from Jasmine Smith. I know someone who's currently working in a South Georgia city, but looking to move here to Atlanta and actively looking for a new career. The educational background is business, but mm. it's very um, vast to find the right position without knowing someone in the position. What advice could you give for landing? Mm. So let me repeat that back to make sure I'm, I'm clear. So um, Jasmine knows someone in South Georgia, South, uh, South Georgia, right? Who's mm -hmm. looking to move here. They're in business or their background is business, but it's kind of vast. Mm -hmm. So I would say um, th they've done some jobs, right? So what specifically have they done? So you need to hone in on that right? Hone in on what that thing is, what their skill set is, and then find those roles and responsibilities that are aligned with that thing. So I used to tell clients, hey, go on Google, right? The Google is, is amazing, right? Go on Google, type in your skills and information and say job requirements and see what comes up with that. Now that's a place to start. Um, but you should also look, Jasmine, tell your friend to kind of look and see what they're interested in, right? Um, because if their business background is vast, then it means that uh, recruiters are going to have more of a challenging time figuring out what role they should place this person for. So it's your response, it's their responsibility, right, to hone in and make their resume specific. I didn't mention it today, but I certainly recommend more than one type of resume. For example, um, y'all might remember the very first slide uh, or my background slide. I shared that I have a PMP, so I have a project management professional um, certification. So I have a project management resume. Um, I have a background in lean training, right, lean certification. I have a process driven resume right? Um, I'm also a program manager. So I have a program manager resume. That's three different ones, right? So you can have different types of resumes and apply to different opportunities, depending on what you see. I hope that makes sense. So that being said, while you were answering that question, we got our five winners. Yay! Yay! So those winners, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? DN Dukes, Alicia James, Miriam Jackson, excuse me, Miriam Jackson, Olivia Jones, and over on Facebook, Tamara Jenkins. Yay! Yay! Congratulations. Yay, so I will drop my email in the chat for those winners to send me your email addresses so that we can deliver those uh, Amazon gift cards to you digitally. Congratulations on winning and thank you for paying attention. So now before we uh, move to the closing, are there any more questions for our guru, Adrian Simpson? Actually, so we do have a couple uh, questions in the chat. Uh, what are the sacrifices you've made to obtain your current goals? That's a really good question. Mm, that's deep. a good one. Ooh, that's, that's a deep one. one. Let me dig deep in my bag. Um, so, you know, that's a great question. I will tell you, so right now, um, my daughter and my husband are downstairs eating pizza. It's Thursday night. We have pizza night, right? 
Um, and so they're downstairs eating pizza right now, but I'm on this live with y'all because um, I am really dedicated to helping people get to their next best opportunity. And, I, and that's not just something that I'm saying to you today. Like I've been doing that for years. Um, and so, but it's important to me to support uh, people that I know and don't know um, in business. I, I, so I've been in um, six figure spaces for a really long time. I've been uh, in some really high level roles um, in the industry and some not so high level, but I, and I've been the only person of color in a room a lot of times on the leadership team, right? Um, and I feel like, I believe that we do not have enough opportunities to get this type of information. I strongly believe that if more people are aware of what recruiters are looking, I've heard more people that I know than I can shake a stick at who will say, well, I don't, my LinkedIn is the updated girl, blah, blah, blah. But guess what? 95% of recruiters are looking for candidates on LinkedIn. So if your LinkedIn isn't updated, they're not, they're not going to find you. And these six figure opportunities are there in spades, in droves, right? 55 job applications every second are being, um, are being submitted on LinkedIn, but you're not on LinkedIn. So what sacrifices have I made? Well, some time, um, yeah, but it's by choice. Uh, and I have a great husband and a wonderful daughter. And so they understand that I do this um, from time to time, right? But I, there's a balance, right? But I am committed. I am committed to bringing more people along the six figure journey, as many as I can. Thank you for that question. You're on mute. And I'm just sitting here telling you how much I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, we have one more question. I was actually going to turn it over to our president, but the question is from her. So I will pose her question and then turn it over. The question is, what is your opinion about joining various professional organizations such as National Black MBA, et cetera? Yeah, um, great question. Thank you, Sora Battle. Listen, uh, I have some memberships and some organizations. Here's what I say about that. I think it's beneficial if you leverage it. Um, I was a person who joined, you know, National Black MBA Association, uh, PMI, lots of different organizations, um, kind of just to have that on my resume, right? But what did I do with it? So there are some people who are really involved. They go to the meetings, they do all this stuff, but I didn't do that. So I didn't get any benefit out of it, except for to say I was a member. But there's, I'm spending money and not doing anything with it now. Um, for our, oh goodness, y'all maybe y'all trying to make me cry tonight. Many years ago, I had gotten laid off, right? I had gotten my MBA, um, I graduated, but I had gotten laid off. And so I was really looking for work. This is before I, you know, figured any of this out, before I had any kind of system at all. Um, and woof, I had enough money to fly to Philadelphia because the National Black MBA Association conference was there, the convention was there, the National Convention. I had a friend who loaned me, who gave me her hotel points because I didn't have enough money for a hotel room. Mm -hmm. And so I flew to Philadelphia. I went to the conference because I was a member. Uh, I did a little bit. I didn't do enough, right? Um, I didn't come away from there with any interviews, but I should have, right? I should have been hungry. I should have been there and making connections, And but I went by myself. And so I was also a little bit timid, right? A little bit shy. Um, I didn't take advantage of it. And so in answer to your question, I think that some people join organizations and don't take advantage of it, but you should, you absolutely should. So if you're going to join, if you're going to spend your money, then understand what the benefits are and take advantage of it. But if you're not, don't waste your money. Don't waste it. Now, I know I said I had, that was going to be the last question, but Come we got on. on Facebook and I just have to ask this one. Yeah. Because it's pretty sticky and I think it's a good question. Okay. CJ, hey CJ, she asks, what if you would like to work for a company that doesn't list job opportunities? It's pretty much a workplace in which it's about who you know. Yes. How do you suggest getting on with that company? I um, thought about standing outside the building with the sign until I got locked up. So yes, don't do that. We're going to give you some tips right now. Is that right, Sora Simpson? Don't do that. Please don't get locked up. Um, but we talked about that, right? So so I would suggest you do your homework, get real strategic, real quick about that company. Make a plan of attack, right? A plan of action. What's the company, right? List all the people that you know that might work there. If you don't know anybody, look on LinkedIn, research the company, see the connections, see who works there. 
if if you on LinkedIn, if you're not get on LinkedIn first, I should say that step back, get on LinkedIn first. Um, but research the company, see who you know who works there, and then reach out to them. Hello, hope you're doing, hope this email finds you well, right? Um, I'm very interested in working for blah, 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 right? Just run it down. And here's the deal. If you don't know about anybody who works there, then find somebody who works there, right? So I've got plenty of people. I told you like 1,700 or 1,800 connections on my LinkedIn. I don't know all those folks, but I'll see a company, right? I have a few companies on my target list. I'll see a company and I'll search and see who's a hiring manager or who's an HR person or talent acquisition manager. Send them a connection request. Find a job that you want that's listed on their company site. If there aren't any, if there aren't any jobs listed or the one that you want or you're qualified for, still connect with their recruiter and say, hey, um, I'm really interested in working for this company. I noticed that you guys don't, you know, post job listings. What's the best way to get information about when you're hiring? Or my background is X, Y, Z. How can I find more information on when you're going to be posting for jobs? Or here's my resume attached. So be proactive, right? Hello, so-and-so. I've attached my resume for you to review. I'm very interested in working for your company. My skill set is this, this, and this. I have experience doing this, this, and this, right? Put the onus on yourself to give them the information. Um, I would love to talk to you further about XYZ opportunities. You may reach me at, never make somebody figure out how to find you. You may reach me at ansense25 at gmail.com and put your phone number underneath and sign it right? But put your resume. So you're proactive. You're going after them. You're telling you're interested in the company, what you want to do, what you're skilled at. And by the way, here's my resume. Here's how to reach me, my phone, my phone number and my email address. So listen and keep doing it. Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. What they'll say is, oh my gosh. Um, oh, sorry, y'all. They'll say, oh my gosh, you know, this girl has, is tenacious, right? She's interested and she, she didn't let up. She didn't quit. I hope that answered your question, Sora. Right, more, come on, more, pass more. Pass it over to Sora Tanika. She's got something for you. Yes, Sora, Adrian. So someone's already trying to jump on your offer for the masterclass. And so they went out to the link and they were saying it was only showing the months of October and the time slots. Is that what they're supposed to be seeing? Yes. So the sign up is only from now until Saturday at midnight, 11.59 p.m. That's when it closes. So all you have to do is just put your name and sign up. That's it. And I'm only taking the top, the first 10. All righty. And with that, thank you all for your questions. And I will turn it over to our chapter president, Sora Danette Battle, to provide closing remarks. Thank you so much, Sora Singleton. And to, um, and Sara Simpson, or Mrs. Simpson, I know some call you. Thank you so much for this wealth of information. One thing I always learned through in my career is that it's always a good time to look for a job. You yes. know, don't think we're in COVID, so that means nobody's looking for a job. That is not true. I know two people who acquired jobs already during this period of supposedly shutdown. So it's always a good time to look for a job. Now, I'm going to tell you what my list of what I'm taking away from that is uh, do it. So, you know, get yourself together, update your resume. Yes. Go to LinkedIn. It's free 99. Don't stay stuck. Mm -mm. Got to keep it moving. Have a sense of urgency. Mm -hmm. Be prepared for the work. Like they said, you got the job. Now mm -hmm. it's time to do the work. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and are you ready to move forward? And always invest in yourself. Absolutely. So thank you so much for bringing us all this wealthy information. Again, like I said, and also I always say, once you get somewhere, don't forget to reach back and pull those forward with you. I went, I used to always work in an environment where there were always those same clusters of people that would go yeah. from job to job to job because yeah. they always kind of pulled each other along. So, and that's what we as women, black women need to start doing too. We pulling do. each other along, you know, because um, there is, people talk about a glass ceiling. Mm -hmm. I've always known it as a sticky floor. So we have to make sure that we don't leave anybody behind. We need to pull us all for it and kind of pile each other ahead of us to keep it moving. Absolutely. Uh, congratulations to all the winners. That tells me a lot of people are paying attention to this. Again, investing in yourself. What better way to put forth your, use your time and your energy. But uh, Sora Simpson, I really enjoyed this presentation. I'm sitting here now thinking about how we could take this to the next step, but I, I'll talk to you later about that. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs>
<laughs> Thank you so much. And again, I want to I want to um, reiterate first my absolute love for this chapter, and second. Thank you for the opportunity for speaking to the audience. And I, I appreciate you giving me this platform to share this information um, because it is a passion of mine. Um, you just hit the nail on the head that you look at, you're at companies and you see groups of people that travel. They say, oh, so-and-so hired me and brought me along. We don't yeah. do that. We don't do yeah. that. We need to do that. No, we, we got to start doing that. Yeah. Absolutely. So, but, uh, and also, especially to Sora Singleton, Stephanie, you and the whole team, this was phenomenal. Listen, can I just say, when I tell you uh, Sora Singleton and Sora Kyle been on me here, oh, yeah. they're, they're awesome. No, they were awesome. I mean, up until today, they have partnered with me every step of the way. They have kept me in line because I like to get out of the lines. <laughs> but they have been wonderful to work with. Thank you all so much. I really appreciate you. Yeah. And thanks to all the listeners for joining on. So like I said, this was invaluable. And I know you'll be hearing a lot more from us. So definitely, I hope all of us take what we, I got a ton of notes over here, okay? So that I'll be sharing with my daughters too, but, yes. and everybody I could think of, but Sarah Simpson, thank you so much for the opportunity to, to hear your bath, your, uh, your, all of your experience and wealth of knowledge, which we definitely uh, can utilize. Mm -hmm. Thank y'all. I appreciate y'all. Thank you. And with that, I do have one thing, so I do apologize. Sora Tanika Kyle in the background running things. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. She has been my committee member who has been the point for this amazing, amazing, amazing event. Thank you, Sora. And to all, we thank you so much for joining. And with that, good night. Good night.